Well, howdy there, y'all. Yamasaki here. Welcome back to the channel. And today is part six of the 1980 Toyota 4x4 pickup preservation project. Now, before this video gets started, I just want to say that this, what you see now, took about the entire summer. So throughout this video, there's different clips in time of what was going on when we were doing our stuff. So I just wanted to clarify, uh, clarify on that. But without further ado, let's get into it. So I am currently in the process of removing that transmission right there. So far I just dropped this cross member and I got that drive shaft removed and I got that one off of the axle there. I'm just going to let it come with the transmission that way we don't have to fiddle putting it on back on both sides. But have it level and I think these jacks are now the only thing holding that transmission up. I was, cur I was curious enough to find out that this doesn't really do anything but kind of hold the back part in place because when I took these four bolts out here and over there, this cross member just dropped down so it just rests right on that spot right there. And I have it level so it looks kind of better from this view. That's the one part I'm worried about is these transmission sticks getting bound up right there in that tunnel when I'm trying to pull it out. So luckily we have three jacks. We've got this huge industrial one here that I'm going to use to lift the axle up. The only problem I'm going to run into is right here the bell housing is a little bit more far forward and it's going to hit right there on the axle. So I'm not sure what to do there, but I do believe I have everything disconnected in here. So hopefully I can get this thing installed in my truck here soon and that will be a great piece of progress. There it is guys, there is my 5-speed transmission. It wasn't too bad to get out, just had to lower it down from that jack and pretty much just came out like a breeze. It's pretty, pretty grimy. Didn't realize there was two wires on it, so that's interesting. I bet one of them is to, to tell you that your four-wheel drive's on. But, I'm not sure about this other one. But I am going to have to pressure wash it and clean her up, but she's free. Turns like a dream. So that is awesome progress. <clears throat> one thing I will show you guys that I found very interesting while I was taking it out is the fact that aside from where the engine mounts, where it mounts to the engine, this cross member is practically the only thing that holds up the back part of the transmission. And there's my puppy girl wanting to say hi. So, you have your transmission and it's bolted to the engine. And then the back part just rests right here. Excuse me, baby girl. This, the back part of the transmission literally just sets right here. Because when I unbolted these eight bolts, this just fell down. There was nothing connecting it to the transmission at all. Unless, well, maybe that's where those bolts go to hold that transmission on. I'm not entirely sure. But what I do know is I gotta clean that and that transmission over there. And then 
it's just a matter of getting the engine done putting that in putting the transmission in and then putting that cab on so awesome awesome well guys would you look at that I finally have a 22R and a 5 speed transmission in my truck we just got this installed today we got the transmission installed yesterday but we ran into problems with the throw out bearing in here got a whole new clutch whole new throw out bearing my dad literally had to grind the throw out bearing off of the casting piece that this lever moves right here on your clutch so but he got that off got the tranny in and we got the engine in and this is one of the early 22R engines but now it's just a matter of putting the engine together and popping the cab on and then pretty much just another winter's worth of work for the finishing touches but I think it's kind of cool I robbed a, an original four-speed transmission gear knob even though if I go all the way over I have fifth gear so nobody will know that I have a five-speed transmission unless I tell them and they drive it kind of cool kind of keep it original looking as a an original bare bones 1980 Toyota pickup but heck yeah guys we are getting some serious progress done and it's coming together real well alrighty y'all so the last time you guys saw my 80 Toyota pickup we had just gotten the engine and transmission in. well in this little update right here I've got a lot of stuff to show you so let's just dive right into it so as you can see we've got a lot of stuff put on this thing and we've had a lot of setbacks now originally I thought this was going to be a breeze, getting this engine in, putting all the parts on, putting the cab on, easy peasy. Nope. Uh-uh. No way, Jose. We've run into a bunch of problems. And just, for, just to clear my name, the rear of the transmission does bolt on this cross member. Those four holes down there that you saw, that is for the rear of the transmission to be bolted on. Um, let me just start back here. Got the drive shaft in. I guess this is from an 81 Toyota pickup. Same year as this transmission. Same year as this engine. I don't think it came out of the one that we robbed all these parts. Actually it didn't because that one's in the addition in storage. But got this on. Brand new ball joints both here and there. So never have to deal with that we're just gonna have to grease it before I actually get to drive it and there goes the light again so that's helpful but that's it for the back part pretty much um, got the headers on these headers are from headman headers made in the USA which is pretty cool um, let me just go ahead and grab this light so you guys can actually see what I'm talking about here so there's the headers Headers are looking nice and sharp, and we have the little fitting down here. This part right here has a fl these flanges are what's holding that on, and then the muffler shop, when we take it to a muffler shop, is actually going to weld the pipe to that part. So we've got those headers on, still have to torque the bolts, but that's no biggie. That's done. Um, got the distributor on, that's pretty much the next part I put on here. New cap, new rotor, new plugs. Told good old Pop to get me some either some red or some blue plugs, and he got me some blue ones. I wanted to make this engine pop a little bit, not just black and gray and all these generic looking parts. I want to be able to know what I'm taking apart, and color differentiating it would help me a lot. So that's what I'm doing here, slowly. Um, I robbed this out of the original engine out of my original engine that came out of this truck this little spark plug wire bracket or holder I painted it red kinda changed the colors a little bit there still have to put this pipe on but that bolts right there on those two motor mounts 
motor mount bolts and then down here it mounts onto that right bolt right there so I just have to loosen those gonna have to paint this I'm probably gonna paint it can't can't really tell right now if I want to paint it blue or paint it red but that's very important that goes down there um, power steering pump we ordered a new one from Rock Auto but it didn't fit so this is the actual one that goes to this truck and we're gonna ship it out and have it rebuilt by Rock Auto themselves so we'll actually have a fitting power steering pump and that goes right there had to change out the bracket because I had a different bracket for a different power steering pump from a different truck on here so we finally figured that little issue out got new belts for this thing they're sitting all in that box right there now here's where the fun part happens the manifold I hate this thing and I'll tell you why so it took me forever to find the actual manifold that we needed to fit because the one off another pickup we have an 88 can't t I can't remember if it was off my dad's old pickup which is an 86 or the 88 but another manifold bolted up pretty well to this thing they just weren't similar enough so we found the right one this is the right manifold um, found a new gasket for it we built a block off plate back here because we're deleting all the EGR emission control stuff so that's a homemade plate that I made painted it red bolted it up I also ordered a block off plate right for right there as well as run right here and I I looked on LCE that's where I got these block off plates they'll be coming in the mail um, they're water block plates so if all this is e EGR stuff then somehow water seeps through all those hoses and that's how it creates the vacuum itself but when I was putting this on I stripped out a couple threads in the actual head and so we have been um, helicoiling a couple of them we helicoiled the bolt right there this one this one the nuts are okay this one's okay that one's okay that one because I just got done today he, me and my dad Healy coiled um, this one and then the bottom one actually no it was this one and then the bottom one that one was already Healy coiled from earlier when we were working on it and then I was getting ready to torque it all back together because we got these two all done and good to go. And then this guy down here where the tape is decided to strip. So we're gonna have to take I'm gonna have to take it off again tomorrow and Healy coil more um, manifold holes. Cause I guess these threads are just so weak we're, we're probably gonna have to Healy coil all of them. And the ones that we have Healy coiled have worked they have torqued they've done nothing wrong nothing bad we also did this one for the fuel pump the right one this one's still good we'll have to see if it needs Healy coiled as well but that's what's been going on with this manifold this has been the biggest pain in the butt so far we did start putting the adapter plates for the Weber carburetor on and one thing you would want to one thing that's important is each one of these adapter plates has a gasket so there's one right there you can probably see it there's another one sandwiched in between here and then there's the one that goes at the bottom of the carburetor now what my dad instructed me to do was what I did you can probably see how dirty that little gasket is well that is grease the instructions say when you put these adapter plates on that you need to put grease on them. Not RTV or any of that silicone stuff. Just plain good old grease. And that's what I did. Just enough to cover the entire thing. Just a tiny bit. Seal it up. It's good to go. Got the starter on. That was kind of a pain in the butt to figure out a little bit. But luckily I bagged the bolt and the nut needed. And got it on just like that. 
So that's pretty self-explanatory there. I got my heater block wire on as well. I found that in one of the toolboxes, still in the box. Just wrapped it around this little uh, motor mount here and it's dangling down here. So that, I think, is pretty much everything that's happened so far. Pretty much just waiting on the block plates and we still got to put the carb on, put the belts on, the power steering pump, but overall there is not much stuff left to put on this thing guys. It's coming along really well. Really good. Man, it's looking good. It really is. Alrighty, so update number five. And as you guys can probably see, we've got a lot of crap to go over. So let's just go ahead and do that. So last time you probably heard me talking about how this was a pain in the ass and how the power steering pump over here wouldn't fit. Well, I'm going to start with this power steering pump because this is an interesting story for sure. Now mind you, I got pretty much all this stuff done about an hour ago. Everything up front here. So what happened with this guy was you probably remember hearing me say that we had the original one sent out. Well, that didn't happen. We never got our original one back. We got this one. Exactly the same as what we bought prior to sending our original one out. And what went wrong was this part right here. The brackets right here would not line up just quite right for that bolt to go through. So what did we have to do? We had to modify the brackets. Now you can probably see that that looks factory. Well guys, I'm here to tell you it's not. We had to cut right about here on both of the brackets because you can probably see right there, there's two brackets. We had to cut right there and we had to weld them in such a way to where they would line up. And this was all due to my dad's handiwork. It looks factory. There was a couple of spots on this bracket that were, because we had to flip both of these tabs around in order for it to fit. And so all my dad ended up doing is welding and doing a lot of grinding. And it looks pretty much factory now. And he did say, that being done, if I ever need to replace this thing, which I probably won't for eh, 40 years or something like that, that uh, I'll never have to have a problem of finding a power steering pump that'll fit because this one fits now. It's solid, it's on there, it's ready to go. And in order for us to do all this modifications, I did have to take a few parts off. I had to take the headers off. Distributor is still not on, but we still have to set the timing and everything. That kind of got screwed up because we've been moving the truck back and forth and everything. And so it's not at top dead center anymore. So simple fix. We have the manual for that. Had to take the alternator off. And what else did I have to take off? I think it was just those three parts that I had to take off in order for us to do the work on this thing. But that is on solid now. Don't have to worry about it. So problem solved there. Um, like I said tonight, I put the alternator back on. I put the headers back on. Still have to torque the nuts. Um, got the fan on got the power steering pulley on, got the belts on. So pretty much that's all done. Um, you guys can probably see the tube here. It's installed, painted red. I think it looks kind of sharp. Got the fuel pump on. Still are going to have to torque it. Um, I'm going to take both of these bolts back out and cut a little bit off because I'm afraid that it might bottom out here. The holes for the bolts are not very big, so <clears throat> there is a spacer in there that we had to order, so keep that in mind if you need a fuel pump and your spacer's crap, you need a spacer right there. So we ordered one of those and we got, we got a new pump too because the other ones were pretty frozen. They were frozen solid, so we didn't want to have to deal with that, we just ended up getting a new one. You guys can probably see the shiny new Weber carburetor that's on there. So. The manifold's torqued and it's on. 
we got this on right here this goes to your water system and your um, thermostat is right in there as well brand new thermostat we put in there I did have to rob off my original engine just like I robbed a couple other parts I had to rob this whole throttle assembly here and that involves this bracket right here and this bracket right here and this spring as well and the Weber carburetor does come with an adapter for it to fit on this throttle piece right here so this is a aftermarket piece that comes with your carburetor so you can set up your throttle right and everything so that's working real good got the air filter on nice and chromed out I would say I was able to find a couple power steering pump hoses so we're gonna have to put those on but there is not much else guys that needs to be done to this thing before the cab right there gets installed I give it about a week and the cab will be on I did find all these little dampeners for the body you are gonna need these if you do a lift kit what my dad was saying and I didn't even know this is on the bed they didn't use these dampeners on the bed it was just set on there pretty much but we do need these for the body because they did use it now I didn't know that and I was thinking well we can just use our spacers which are about two two and a half inches my dad has told me I thought we could just set them down set the cab down and all would be good but no you do need these guys you do need these so if you have them don't lose them and there are some that go on the bottom too here's a good example right here you got one up top you got one on the bottom and then that's pretty much it it just sets on there the body just sets on these and I did find more of these bottom ones so I don't have to worry about that I did make a whole bunch of rubber discs though to go on the top of these things especially on the spacers I'm not sure where it went probably fell off somewhere ah it's right here I did make a whole bunch of thin rubber spacers to go on top here just so it's not resting on that plastic um, found a bolt that fits right here for the exhaust shield right here, so I'm happy about that. I still have to find, I don't know if you can see, but there's one right there and there's one on the other side. There's two bolts that I need to find for the bell housing still, but I'm sure I'll be able to come up with something here soon. Which in any case, even if the cab's on and I don't get to those, I can still just crawl under it and get it all set up, but... And in the last video, I probably told you that I um, got new U-joints, so never have to deal with that again. Probably going to have to paint the bell housing because it has been raining a little bit and this thing has been uncovered. But the engine has been under the roof here, so it hasn't gotten real dirty or anything. Just blown it off because a little bit of dust. <clears throat> but I am going to have to paint the bell housing here. It is cast iron and, and you can see it is surface rusting a little bit. But no biggie, just mask off all this stuff and give it a quick paint job, and it should do the job. But other than that, guys, there's not much else to do. Like I said, got to put the distributor back on, torque these bolts, torque these bolts, install these hoses, and the cab should be ready to go after that. been an adventure that's for sure starting to look like a truck now why don't I just show you what's been happening oh man this thing's looking good it's finally got the cab on it had it for 10 years been working on it and the cab's never been on until we got it on got the steering column in Got the brand new windshield <clears throat> with a new gasket because you guys remember how bad the other one was. So we got that in. The seats are in. I still need to tighten them up a little bit out, you know, in spots. 
We did try and put a tilt wheel in here. This is actually the original steering column, steering wheel, and everything that came with this truck. We tried to put the tilt wheel in here, and it's a lot more beefier. That manual right there does <clears throat> go into good detail about the steering columns. But what the problem was is actually, I can grab this light here and show you. Right where those bolts are right there and right there on the tilt wheel steering column they don't line up so if you if you're wanting to put a different steering column in one with a tilt wheel it's way beefier at, on these brackets on these attachment points here so just keep that in mind and if that if you do run into that problem you're gonna have to take the entire brake assembly out because that is what is holding it up right here. And that brake assembly goes all the way back down to where the pedal is here. So just a little bit of information on that. Um, what else? <clears throat> so what is going on right here is the shifter is hitting where the metal is, we did have to cut this here to get these in when we were lifting the cab on. So what what goes on here is on the four speeds, their shift lever is more to the right, which is why there's a circle here. But the transfer case is in a good spot; it can move up and down and all that. But I looked on the SR5, which is what the transmission and engine is out of. And they just have one big hole for both of these. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to just cut it out. Cut all that out. We'll build uh, some custom leather boots. Make it all nice. I think that'd be pretty cool. But for the most part, it's done in here. I was able to find a key for it for the ignition. And we do have a spare, so that's good. Just have a whole bunch of Toyota keys lying around on this thing because of all the trucks that we have. Um, the next big thing after we got the windshield and the steering column, the seats, my dad was telling me was the brake lines and the hoses and the calipers and all that. And so I've been searching for all the hoses. I did find the rest of my brake lines as well as my clutch line right there. So that's very good. I'm just going to have to clean those up and bend them back and whatever. <clears throat> so what we had to do too with the steering column is right here we had to cut out the fender well. Because of the two inch body lift that is on this thing that we built, it, it wasn't allowing us to line up this shaft to this spline down here. So we had to cut a little bit of it out, and actually I'll show you the piece that we cut out. I put it back here. We cut this part out, and that would have gone right there. And there's nothing really bad that's missing from it. Just these little plugs for when you're putting your plastic fender wells in. But it doesn't even really look that bad. It doesn't even look like anything didn't come from the factory so there's that little spiel I was able to find some hoses I found this hose now I had no idea we actually pulled the trekker up the old one that's beat up <clears throat> and I'm gonna use that I'm using that as a template to figure out what the rest of this stuff I need to get now the hoses are pretty easy to figure out now that I assembled it. So right here, I was wondering what this thing is. And this thing is actually a valve. And it is all part of your air conditioning, or not your air conditioning, but your air ventilation, your heater core and all that. And what that does is that is the difference from hot and cool air is this valve. And one of the cables to the heater core comes right through this hole here, which is going to be very tricky. But <clears throat> it's all connected and goes down here. 
I'm actually not actually sure where this hose goes yet, but we've got this one running down here to an attachment point going down to that pipe and then there's your that is where your lower radiator hose will go and then right here this brake line goes to this wheel because it just connects right right here or no maybe it no it connects right here right there so that's that brake line. So it's just little steps at a time. We're figuring it out. But it's coming along pretty good. It really is. It's going to be one hell of a truck when it's done. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment for more content, and Yamasaki out. See you all later.